Hey all, Pixel here in Probable Garage. We're back on the Cyberpunk Cube, I'm working on the interior today. I've done a little bit with this interior. Um, the seats were swapped out from a different model that are different fabric. I added a little details here. I painted this when I was doing all the, took it all apart to put the lights on the outside. I have added this here and stripped out the two pillar trims, but I want to make some major changes today. The big ones are, I want to, I love this ripple headliner that it has, but I hate this ugly mouse fur sort of gray color. So this is going to get completely recovered. And then similarly on the doors, there's this area. This was the same fabric that was on the original seats in here. Um, and it's just boring and black and blah, and it's torn on some of the other seat, the other door panels. So I'm going to see if I can take these door panels apart and recover just this section. So that's the fi primary focus today is fabric work on the headliner, fabric work on the door panels. But in among that, I'm sure I'm going to get some other stuff done because while I'm doing those, there's going to be a couple other jobs that are going to be easy to do while that's all torn apart. So yeah, let's just, let's just get into it. That is out. I'm almost a little sad. I'm almost a little sad that that headliner looks so cool, because this also looks really cool in its own way. But Jesus Christ, also, that's fucking hot. So I'm better off having a headliner in it. I do wish I had some um, sound deadener. Now that I'm thinking about it, it would have been a smart thing to order, but it requires advanced thought, and I'm not being good at that lately. But. I got it out. Now I know where the airbag is, which is right at the bottom, which means that I can, as long as I'm above these handles, I can do whatever the hell I want, but I can't fuck with the bottom edge because I would mess with the headliner, or with the airbag. Other than that, there's not really anything else I need to concern myself with particularly. Yeah. Oh. Let's see how this is attached. Weird plastic clippy things. I'm not going to mess with that right now. But at some point, that piece is getting... At some point, this piece is coming out and something custom is going in its place. So at least I know I need to get the panel back off again when we're at that stage. But here we go, one headliner. I cleaned it some when I got the car, but you can s I don't know how well it shows on camera. There's just old marks and scratches and stuff in it. And I love the ripple effect, but again, the gray is just bland. So on the subject of not bland, what am I covering it in? Well, because subtlety is absolutely my middle name, this stuff. This is like a flip-flop purple and blue that I think will look really cool with the ripples and will just look super strange and bizarre also, which is a bonus for me. I am going to be... I was thinking about doing an embroidery roof on this just like I'm doing on the door panels. You'll see that in a bit. But um, I decided that was going to be a little too dark and a little too... Not antique is not... I don't know. This seemed like more appropriate in the sense that this could almost seem like the stock headliner that this car could have had versus something that was added later. I don't know. I just like this material and I think it'll look really cool over the ripples. So I need to do some prepping, but it's basically going to get glued in as it is because it's just barely going to be wide enough. So it's got a slight stretch to it. So I'm actually going to have to take full advantage of that to get it to stick down. I almost forgot, I pulled this thing off of a Volvo at the junkyard, the same one that gave me some other parts we'll see later. Um, this is is for basically the, the it covered up a part of the roof. And I'm gonna take it and modify this spot here to fit that, because it looks like it belongs there. Um, it's mostly gonna consist of cutting a hole that these two tabs can hook into and then 
where these two screws go, I'm going to have to like put a piece of metal in the back and glue it to the back of the headliner so I can put two sheet metal screws in there. And then that'll go here, and then I can repaint this and I can add switches or something to it. But I was going to build something that went here, and this just is so much easier while still having a cool little look. So yeah, I'm going to get... I'm going to set you up on time lapse again. I'm going to cut the hole for this, figure that out, and then get my partner to come out here and help me glue that all down. Didn't come out perfect, but it came out pretty damn good, I think. And it is exactly as absurd as I wanted it to be. So now I just uh, get that stuffed back in the car. Well, I think I'm going to have to call that a win. Um, <laughs> it is, I don't know how good it shows up on camera exactly, but in person it's a lot more flawed. Just the biggest thing was gluing it to the carpety surface. It's got lumpiness to it just because I glued it to you know fibers not to just a flat surface or foam so and it's got lots of little wrinkles in it it's got some a couple little glue spots and a few tiny wrinkles and like different kinds of wrinkles um, but overall it looks really cool it's it's got the general effect I want it's imperfect but it's still damn cool and it is completely utterly stupidly ridiculous so that part I absolutely love. Um, everything is pretty much reassembled at this point. You can probably see some stuff hanging down over there. Part of this, that's, I put in a, a, that's because I put in a radio and it's got a backup camera in it. So that's the wiring for that because I haven't installed it yet. I didn't bother to film that because it's just putting a radio in. I might do something interesting eventually with the like building a housing to make the camera look more interesting or something. That I'll put on film, but just installing a stock one is not that interesting. Um, I cut all this out. And actually, this is complete happenstance, but I lined it perfectly with this bracket that's for the factory extra light that can be here. So that was, that was unbelievable luck. Nothing else. That was pure luck that that is exactly perfect. But that piece will be able to clip in here and then screw in. I need to cut a little of the fabric away from where the screw holes are just so when the screw goes in it doesn't yank all the fabric. But that's all set to go in. I'm not going to install it yet because I want to paint it and do stuff to it first. Um, and then the these cubes are infamous for, this is the mount for the rear view mirror, the center of it breaking out. I think it's supposed to be like a safety breakaway mount, but they break and your mirror stick falls out. Oh, and it apparently was really sketchy and then when I went to go and screw it it just snapped so I'm going to line this back up to where it's supposed to be in here and then JB weld it in there because I'm willing to accept that little bit of an extra risk to have a working rear view camera or rear view mirror so yeah I'm really happy with that that's super cool so I think I'm gonna call this project to a close Yay, next morning. This is still absurd, I still love it. Um, today we're going to work on door panels, except I'm not quite sure how this is going to go, so I'm actually going to rip one of the rear ones off, because if I either A, completely F it up, or B, this takes a while, I don't have no driver's door panel, because the kiddo rarely rides in this, so chill deal. One door panel off. So my plan is to take this section out and refinish it in this dragon fabric, just because that looks really damn cool. Like, if I was being sensible and wanted to make a realistic -y cyberpunk thing, I'd probably use something like this octagon, like, pattern stuff. But I want dragon door panels, so I'm going to have dragon door panels. I don't know if I have enough. <laughs> That's the one concern, is I bought this at a clearance place, so they may not have more of it. So I may end up having to, like track down this fabric and pay way too much for it because I only bought a certain amount at a clearance place. 
So let's commit. So that pad is in here. They put it in and then they melt all the pins to hold it in place. So I'm going to have to drill out every single one of these pins to get it off. I don't know what the heck that's going to mean for getting it back on later. That's future me's problem. But yeah, one, two, three, four, five. You get the idea. They go all the way around. I'm just going to get a big drill bit to sort of shave the heads off and take the minimum amount of material out and go forward from there. I mean, that's literally, it's stuck on. So I'm going to trim the edge a bit to expose all those holes where, you know, like all this stuff where it was mounted. And then I get to figure out how I'm putting it back in again. All right. So now I have to figure out how I'm doing this. My first thought is high, very high bond double-sided tape on the sort of low spots all around this that ride on the door panel. Um, I have no idea if that's going to work. The good thing about this door panel is this part here kind of fits into a spot on the door to be the support for it as an armrest, which means it's also going to help keep it in place. So hopefully that will do everything I need it to do. All right, well, <laughs> the tape does nothing because the this plastic thing's got... The fabric on the other side so it won't stay stuck. Um, these three screws will hold. That screw holds because it's got something to go into. On this side there's nothing with any depth so the only way I could put screws in is from the other side and I'm pondering on that right now. What I should have done was used a much smaller drill bit to drill out the things or very carefully scrape the heads off or something because these holes are so big that there's no way to like re-glue there. So, learning process. At worst, I'll go to the junkyard and get another door panel and do this again. Like, I'm not terribly worried. But, bummer. You know what? I'm trying to decide whether to just put sheet metal screws in from the other side. Um, that'll work, but kind of look like ass. That's a bummer. I thought this would be easier to fix. What I was hoping was going to happen was that I was just going to shave off the top of these, but realistically, once it hit the plastic, it just, the drill bit just went through because this stuff is so flimsy. All right, well, here's where we ended up. These are in there to keep it in place because it won't stay in place otherwise. I haven't decided. I'm either going to go to the junkyard, get a whole other door panel, do this again, try and figure out a different way to do it, because I have to take that piece off to refinish, recover this. But I'm either going to do that or I might, maybe I'll count, get some countersunk screws and put a nut on the back. I don't know. But for now, that works. It looks like these look intentional, so it looks fine. I love this fabric. That part I'm really happy with. I did discover because this of the kind of embroidered fabric this is, it does not react well to being lifted back off the glue and stuck again the way that the... Um... So the thing I discovered about this embroidery fabric is it did not react well to being lifted off the glue and stuck again the way the spandex for the headliner did. That didn't give a shit. This kind of pulls a pills a little bit. It's not really obvious, but I'm noticing it, so I'll have to be more careful about that. All right, slight improvement. I took out the sheet metal, the, the self-tappers, and I used some finish washers and Phillips screws. 
This is the same way all the interior of the van is installed. That just looks a little bit more finished and intentional rather than just ramming a self-tapper into it. That I find perfectly acceptable. So that is how I'm going to do. And there it is back in. I'm pretty darn happy with that. Not perfect, but pretty darn good. And actually I've done the other side as well. And that came out pretty good too. This side actually came out a little bit rougher down here. I got some wrinkles, but don't care. This is off because I'm going to be painting those. So now that I've done the headliner with this, I wanted to get some more of this effect into other parts of the interior, but this fabric's a pain to work with and it's not going to stand up to any abrasion whatsoever. So anything I covered in this that would be touched regularly would just be destroyed pretty quickly. But I wanted this sort of effect. So I went digging through both my paints and what they sell at the local art supplies place. And they didn't have exactly these colors the way I wanted them, but I found something that looks like it's going to work really well. So I found this purple and this blue. Fortunately, I actually had both of these. This is the color I've been using for the, like the hubcaps and the other parts of the body that I don't want to look matte, but I want to be the same color. So it's a pretty good match. The problem is this is flat and this is a gloss metallic. So this wouldn't match this effect at all. My solution is, and I've done a couple of these, is I've been putting a base coat of the purple down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I've been putting a base coat of the purple down and then misting over it with the blue and very intentionally not hitting everything and leaving the purple exposed, but also trying to concentrate the blue onto the sort of flatter parts. Actually, I touched it right there. I have to touch it up. But like, you see that? That isn't this. But it's a pretty darn good approximation of that. I'm really happy with that. I think that's going to look great. I did this little piece that goes around the rearview mirror. So for right now, I'm not doing the ship bars and the visors. The visors are vinyl, and I'm not sure how well they'll take the paint without it cracking or flaking. And the bars, I want them to be still be visible if people want to grab them. I don't want them to blend into the headliner. Oh, and part of this is even the parts that I want to be mostly purple, I'm misting over very slightly with the blue because it deposits the shimmery metallic shine on top of them. So it takes care of the fact that the purple is flat by always having a little bit of the blue on top of it to both make it look a little mixed, you know, because this is never perfectly one color or the other, but also give it that little bit of shine. So these are all going to sit and dry probably overnight and then... I may clear coat them, I may just install them. I'm in, undecided on that right now. So, but I can make that decision on the clear coat tomorrow after they're dried. All right, both front door panels are done back in and I've got these painted to back in and uh, the parts of the dash I did in red and purple have been redone in the blue and purple. And I love it. It's absurd, it's crazy. I got dragon door panels, I got a weird trippy color changey headliner and detail stuff to match i like that a lot that looks completely crazy in just the right kind of way so yeah new headliner new door panels new detail bits pretty happy with that for a couple hours in one day and a couple hours in another day so but i think i'm going to be done for right now thank you all very much for watching i'll talk to you later bye